All right, so I also wanted to go over some verbal practice because I know this is a section that a lot of people have difficulty with. And um, some schools, I know some in Canada, actually only look at the verbal section. So I think it's really important to try to nail the section as hard as you can. It's not as studyable as the other ones, and I think that's one of the reasons why people don't, don't do as well in it or say, you know, verbal is very hard. But I think if you can try to distill the passages like I do, um, I actually got a perfect score on this section. So I think that there are some strategies that I have that I hope to translate over to you, and maybe we can uh, improve your score. So one of the things before we get started that I want to want to talk about is whether or not to use highlighting. And some people swear by highlighting. Other people say don't use it at all. Just read through the passage. I like to highlight a little bit here and there, major points, words that really show what the author is trying to say. I think are important to highlight. And um, if you ever, you know, finish reading the passage and you kind of want to get like a a rehash, like you know, quick few second rehash of what was actually said, you can just look at your highlighted words and then kind of remember and then use those words and keep those words in your head when you're actually answering the questions. All right, so you're probably going to have to actually watch this video also in high definition so you can read the words better, but let's get started. Okay, so right off the bat, the first sentence is a little profound, actually. It says, the truth is we know little about the wolf. Okay, so it looks like what this entire passage is going to be talking about is um, how people generally thought they knew a lot about the wolf, but the truth is that we don't, right? So a lot of times with these passages is that they, in the beginning of the passage, this is one style. This is not, you know, a hard and fast rule for verbal passages in the MCAT, but they, they like to start with a conception in the beginning that others may hold, and they'll talk about it for a little bit, and then they'll completely destroy that conception. They'll debase it, and they'll use their own reasoning and own evidence and stuff like that. And so a big part of getting verbal questions right is knowing exactly what the passage is saying. And I actually genuinely believe that the most important thing and probably the only thing you need to know is what the author is trying to tell you. If you answer every question saying, what is the author trying to say? Uh, put it, put the question in the author's perspective and never put an answer choice that would contradict that, then I think you'll go very far in the verbal section. Okay, so if you want to highlight this sentence, go ahead. We know a little about the wolf, okay? It's more about our imagination than what it actually is, okay? So now it's talking about this certain Eskimo tribe. And it's just, you know, there are a lot of, there are a lot of details in this paragraph here, the next paragraph about the, the Nanamuit Eskimos. But it's not really important to, you know, memorize every single detail in this paragraph, right? You just want to know that, for the most part, this Eskimo tribe believes that, you know, that there's a some sort of a hierarchy within the pack. Some never kill, others specialize. And it actually does give a very important point, though, at the end of the, at the, end of the paragraph. It says... If big males always lead the pack and do the killing, and the Eskimos shrug and say, maybe sometimes. And I think that's important because it's it's providing a little bit of support for the original, what the author is trying to say, is that there is no, for the wolf at least, there is no hard and fast rule uh, for its behavior. There is no, you know, you can't categorize the wolf that well. And I think that's what the author is trying to say, but we'll, we'll read on and see. So let's just highlight that. All right, so this next paragraph right here is actually more of a descriptive paragraph um, about wolves themselves. It seems almost that it's like a factual paragraph that would um, 
that's not coming from you know stories from a specific tribe, right? So these are things that if you see a question that says what is true about a wolf, you want to go to this paragraph and kind of go back to what it's saying rather than going to the ones that talk about what other tribes or other people believe about wolves, right? So here's another big sentence. The wolf exerts a powerful influence on the human imagination. Okay, and this goes directly back to the first sentence that says the truth is we know little about the wolf. So when it says we know, I think it it means the absolute definition of the word no, meaning that the actual truth, what what is true in nature in the world. So um, you know, one tribe may know a lot about the wolf, but that's their specific interpretation of what the wolf is. And what the author is tra- talking about is that we don't know the absolute what what the wolf truly is. Okay, and then if you go back to this sentence right here. It says that the wolf is this, this is showing a mechanism by which that, that would explain exactly why we don't know much about the wolf. And it's because, like it says right here, the wolf exerts a powerful influence on the human imagination. Okay? So here's another sentence. The Bella Coola Indians believe that some that someone once tried to change, blah 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 blah. Uh, it talks about, you know, some of their lore, their stories about it. And here is another important part of this paragraph, and it actually shows all the different viewpoints people have, all the all the diverse viewpoints viewpoints people have about wolves. So it says some are born killers. Uh, some say that a wolf has never killed anyone, and neither is true. Okay, so this is going back to before where I said that um, the author tends to take a more moderate position. So initially he's saying that we don't know much about the wolf. Some people are saying this. Other people are saying that. Neither one is true in and of itself. There might be aspects of each viewpoint that are true, but uh, usually the polarized viewpoints are not. All right, so let's move to this paragraph right here. It says, in the end, it is only an opinion. Okay. So this is kind of a poetic sentence right here. To be rigorous about wolves, you might as well expect rigor of clouds. All right. I guess that's meaning something like clouds are very diverse, difficult to describe. No one cloud is like another. Um, And I think that's what the author is trying to say about wolves as well. So now the author is saying that he has a very nuanced and diverse, has has been exposed to a diverse amount of viewpoints regarding wolves. So maybe we can trust the author more than we can trust specific groups like the Indians or the uh, Eskimos, right? So... So he said that he spoke with people who loved them and people who hated them. And here's another sentence right here. It's a little bit more poetic, but it says that men do not discover their gods, they create them. 